great honour for me to be here. It's a real delight to be here, and I want to thank all of you for coming. I see Senator Devine here, and Councillor Doolan. No doubt there are elected representatives, they're all very welcome. Bobby Bala, who I'm a huge fan of, and who has been tremendous throughout uh, everything that we've been through over the course of the last 30 or 40 years. And of course, of course Martin Mantra, who I know very well, and he and I worked very closely together at the beginning of the peace process when Albert Reynolds uh, was teaching, at a time whenever people uh, were reluctant to speak to Sinn Féin uh, representatives. Uh, Martin and I were meeting regularly in all sorts of uh, secret places in, in and around the border, but it all led to a good outcome and one which I think has uh, overwhelmingly received the support of all of the people of Ireland. Uh, we want peace, uh, we want to continue to move forward, and we want to continue to work to end the divisions that have been so much to our detriment in the past. But to be here today, uh, and to be asked by the, uh, by the NGC Corps Ledgewood Society, and I want to pay tribute to them, to Dublin uh, City Council, and to the Richmond Barracks uh, Restoration Committee, for all that they have done to make today possible. As an Irish Republican, obviously, it's a great feeling, sense of history, to come in here to a place where the leaders of the 1916 Rising were held, after the Rising, where the court martials took place. And uh, just a couple of weekends ago, I was at the commemoration for the, uh, for the Irish men who lost their lives in, at the Saw, uh, at, at Island Bridge. And after Island Bridge, I went up the Arbor Hill. Uh, there was nobody on it. Island Bridge was thousands. And I went to Arbor Hill and it was just me and my wife. And, and we said our own prayers there for uh, the leaders of the, the Rising. And, and even in that day shows how complex our history is. And no more complex than the life that Francis Ledwich uh, uh, led. Someone who came from very humble, poverty-stricken beginnings whose father died uh, when he was very young, and his mother was left to, to rear uh, a large family. And of course our history is very complex. We as Irish Republicans, I suppose, and generally throughout the island of Ireland for many decades after the First World War and the Easter Rising, had a, almost a, a national amnesia about what happened during the course of the First World War. And, and that's something that we obviously in recent times have been endeavouring to get over and I think it's only really right that we do that. I first became aware of Francis Ledwich when I read Seamus Heaney's uh, great poem, magnificent poem, in uh, memoriam to uh, Francis uh, Ledwich. And, and that's what generated my interest, how someone who was a, an Irish nationalist, even a Republican, who was involved with the Gaelic League, uh, could, could find themselves uh, fighting for the British Army uh, in a war which was brought about by the clash of two empires where millions and millions of people were slaughtered. Fascinating story. So, so fascinating that I took a decision uh, at the beginning of this year that I would, uh, I guess the backdrop of you know, the, the, the huge anniversaries that occur in, uh, in 1916 and 2016, First World War, uh, the Easter Rising, that, that I would continue to reach out to the uh, Unionist community in the North uh, by, by recognising uh, the sacrifices that, that were made at the Somme. In, in, in what was a, an appalling war. And, and I decided that I would travel to the Somme and I would travel to uh, Flanders. Uh, and my staff in the office worked out a programme, but at the very beginning I made it absolutely clear part of that programme had to be a visit to Francis Ledwidge's grave. And, and we did that a, a couple of weeks ago. Seamus Heaney is, is from my county. Uh, someone who I think in his lifetime made a, a massive contribution towards recognising the otherness of people. James used to use a, a phrase all the time about through otherness. Somebody's described as through other. In Ireland, people normally think about it, that they're all over the place, that they're confused, that they're not organised. 
But James used the phrase three honours in relation to the way in which the unionist community in the north and the nationalist republican community in the north needed to be working through each other, but in a positive, organised and constructive way to build a better future for everybody. And uh, it was really he who generated my interest in Francis' language, but Francis in his own right has become a, a fascinating character for me because of the, the, the fact that he was a rebel in, in many ways. He was, he was from the nationalist tradition, but he ended up in the British Army. But he was a rebel in the British Army. He was actually court-martialed because he ended up in a, an argument with someone who spoke disparagingly about the leaders of the 1916 Rising. And, and he obviously was someone who had a great love of Ireland. And like Seamus Heaney, he was someone who had a great love of the country, of fields, flowers, wildlife. And, and so, fascinating character for me. And, and I'm you know, absolutely delighted to, to be here, to uh, feel very privileged to be invited to uh, the, uh, the, the Rory uh, Breslin uh, sculptor uh, in his honour, in, in such a place. So, a complex history, but it all comes together here in Richmond Barracks, where the leaders of the 1916 Rising were, were tried and then brought to the execution. And of course, where uh, Francis Ledwich himself enlisted in the British Army and went off to be killed, uh, as he was, uh, effectively on the 31st of July, 1917. He will be 99 years dead next Sunday. And anyway, he will be 100 years dead uh, next year. I, I went to his grave. It was uh, a very emotional uh, occasion. Uh, I brought with me uh, a poem that he wrote himself to a dead poet, and I recited it at the grave. And, and I, I left the poem uh, on top of his grave. So I think it's wonderful what you've done. I think everybody associated with us deserves tremendous credit. Of course, Francis was also not just connected to Richmond Barracks, he was connected to Everington Barracks in my own city. And as a result of the work that Martin Mansra and I, and indeed many others, done in building the peace process, I found myself as a Deputy First Minister in the North, a co-equal position with Ian Paisley, with Peter Robinson, and now with Arlene Foster. And our department have responsibility for Everington Barracks. That was the barracks that the British Army used on the day of Bloody Sunday. And it is now under our control. And we have spent something like £30 million turning it into a public shared space. Francis Nedwidge was there for some time and wrote something like 60 poems whilst he was in Ebrington Barracks. The rewrite of the poem to Thomas McDonough actually ends with the last line in Derry of the Little Hills. So you can see the, the connection between Richmond and Everton. It is only right that we honour our poets, and it's only right that we preserve their work and their memory and their lessons we can learn from the lives that they led. Seamus Heaney just died a couple of years ago, as many people know. And uh, our councillors, the Champaign councillors on Maherfeld Council, we're the largest party on the council by a country mile, decided that uh, we would propose that we would purchase uh, the old RUC station in Balahi. And we have spent something like four million pounds turning that into Seamus Heaney's home place. And that will open to the public in the autumn of this year. It is an absolutely magnificent building. And, and Seamus would love it because one of his best poems was a poem called uh, When the Constable Calls. <laughs> and anybody that has read that poem will understand the significance of it in terms of the history of the world. So, you know, thanks to Seamus Heaney, uh, I came to know all about uh, Francis Ledwidge. Uh, and I, I really think the, the way that we all in, in Ireland have grown up in the course of recent times and recognising that something like 40,000 men from every part of Ireland 
gave their lives in the First World War for various reasons. And it's not really the politics of all of that. For me, it's about the, the humanity and the inhumanity of the war that they lost their lives in. So I think it's only appropriate that we remember them. When I went to the Somme and when I went to Flanders, I, I brought with me Conor Heaney, who's a member of Sinn Féin, and he's one of my advisors in the office of First and Deputy First Minister. Conor's great-grandfather was killed at the Somme. And we searched for his grave when we were there, and we found it. And I think we were the only second visitors at the grave in a hundred years. His brother was also killed at the sub. I have two other friends in Derry City, Tony Doherty. His father was murdered by the Parachute Regiment on Bloody Sunday. His great-grandfather was killed in the First World War. Mark Mullen was another one of my very close friends member of Sinn Féin. His great-grandfather was killed in the First World War. I didn't know this until recently. So there's an awful lot of catching up for all of us to do. But I think of what you've done today, the honouring of Francis Ledwidge, uh, in such a place, such a, such a really iconic place for all of us as Irish Republicans, is absolutely a sure sign of our ability as Irish Republicans to grow up but also to appreciate the challenges and difficulties that others faced in their lives that led them to make choices that brought them to either Flanders Fields or to the Somme to lose their lives. So it's a great honour to be here and I, I really, really am delighted and appreciate uh, that the Dedgewood Society have asked me to do this today. Gormila, Gormila. To invite, I'd like, now I'd like to invite Martin McGuinness to unveil the sculpture of Francis Ledwidge.